So if you're someone that fat shots, thin shots, and just generally hits the ball poorly, you're in luck. Because today's video, I'm gonna show you how to become a great ball striker. So like I said in the introduction, the idea of today's video is how to make you a great ball striker. And I think the frustration for a lot of golfers is, especially when the golf ball's on the floor, but this will tie in even up to driver. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few clubs in the video, is that they might get the tee shot away, feel it's a real green light opportunity to get to the green. And then they hit way behind the golf ball and maybe only hit it 40, 50 yards. The other real killer I think golfers find is that they get there, again, I've got a seven iron in my hand, so a club they should be very confident with. And they just cold top the ball. And even though it might go nice and straight, they feel it's a real wasted opportunity. Now, having said that, just occasionally, they set up to a shot, bit nervous because they're not really sure what's coming. And they get a super strike, and even though that one's just turning over a little bit, they kind of go, that's what I want. But honestly, I don't know what I've done differently. And I think sometimes the feedback they get can be very destructive. Now, this video is really kind of, I suppose, inspired by a golf rider in the other day who had a really good looking golf swing, but his ability to strike the ball consistently was very, very poor. So we opened up by starting talking about what he believes should happen at the bottom of the golf swing. So we talked about, should we be making contact with the ball first or the ground first? Now, as I ask these questions, feel free to comment below. And he said, well, he feels that we should hit the ball first and then the ground, which we agreed was very good. But he actually said that he felt a lot of the time, if he hit the ground, he hit the ground behind the golf ball, or he said he felt he didn't hit the ground at all. Now, almost without knowing it, he's already hit the nail on the head. So what he was talking about was, if we look at your golf swing, and we talk about where the lowest point of your swing should be, the lowest point when the ball's on the floor should be after the golf ball. So what he was very good at describing was somebody whose low point was behind the golf ball. So what we said is, first thing we need to work on was how we're gonna start controlling that low point. And I think a great little exercise, and on my mat, I can scuff the mat, but you can do this on grass, or on a driver range mat, use some of the markings or put a chalk line on there. We initially spoke about drawing a line on the mat where the golf ball would be, and then another line about three or four inches ahead. And we said what we wanted to do was set up on the back line, but when we swing, try and hit the front line. So instantly his question was, well, how am I gonna do that? And as a coach, I'm not always super keen to tell somebody exactly what they need to do. It's kind of letting them work it out for themselves. So the first thing we noticed with his swing is he didn't really change a lot on his backswing, but we saw a really big shift into that lead foot towards the target and straight away, we started seeing him making contact with the line or even slightly ahead of the line. And it was no big surprise because this is a drill I use a lot with golfers and you instantly see a real big improvement on where their lowest point would be. Now you've got to remember where you touch the ground isn't necessarily, or well, isn't the lowest point. The lowest point's gonna continue down into the ground from there. So as ever with no golf ball, he was really, really good at it. But then we said, right, we're gonna put the ball on the back line, but we're still gonna try and hit that front line. First shot, we stood up. But it was better than we'd seen so far. And the low point actually started to move slightly ahead. So a good example here on Trackman is 0.3 inches ahead. Now his was actually 0.2, but incredibly close to that. But what we noticed was as soon as the golf ball was there, there was a real inability for him to move that strike point forward. And when we discussed it, it became very apparent 
that it was the golf ball that was causing the issue. So he definitely said to me that he, in his mind, even though he knew he wanted to hit the ground up here, he wanted to start getting underneath the golf ball. And even underneath or even focusing on the back edge of the golf ball. And what I tend to see as a coach is when people are trying to get under the ball, they'll make a pretty good backswing, but then the weight sits back. And if anything, they then bottom out a little early, add lots and lots of loft to it. So again, we said, right, take the golf ball away, make a swing, set up on the back line, hit the front line. Absolutely perfect. So we then said, right, let's put the golf ball there on that back line again, but let's actually not look at the golf ball. Now I know for a lot of you out there, you might go, what are you talking about? You have to look at the golf ball. In my opinion, most ball sports, you need to focus on the ball because the ball's moving. So they're reactionary sports. But actually with golf, that being static should make it incredibly simple. So the reason we set up to the ball well is that when we swing, the club should pass through that point and collect the golf ball. And we've all heard, haven't we, pretend the golf ball's not there. But when you're trying to get under the ball, hit the ball, focus on a part of the ball, you're going to change your swing. So we had him really focusing on that front line. And with a seven iron, my ball's fairly forward, uh, fairly central. And then we'd say that low point's kind of just inside my lead heel. So we got him to hit a few shots, focusing on the line in front of the golf ball. And even though the accuracy wasn't quite there to begin with, we started to see the low point gradually moving further and further ahead. So that first one, 0 0.7 inches. So I'm going to focus a little further forward. And we started to see that as the low point was moving further forward, the launch angle was coming down. We can see that angle of attack minus. So that's 1.6 degrees down, 165 carry. And I think a lot of you guys watching might have been told in the past that you need to hit down more. For me, the key thing to understand is to create a more downward angle of attack, you need to move that low point forward because the club's traveling down to get to that low point. So the more we did with him, we were kind of setting him little challenges. And I know when he practices on his own, he's not gonna have the level of feedback Trackman gives him, but we said, can you get that low point as far forward as possible? I mean, almost trying to get it like a foot forward if he could. And we stood up. And we weren't able to move it a foot forward, but again, we can see from that last shot, 2.3 inches ahead, 2.6 degrees down, launch angle at 17.7, .7, and carry at just under 172. So it was great to see the improvements with his seven iron. And he was openly quick to admit that too much of his focus was on making contact with the golf ball and not enough on making a good movement. And he said that his practice swing had always felt much, much better than the actual swing. Even though in the practice swing, he wasn't really focused on controlling his low point, it was very noticeable how the practice swings, the contact was ahead. So how do we then take this into our other clubs? So seven irons pitching wedge, the ball's gonna be very central. And we said that low point's maybe just inside the lead heel. So as I move into five wood, I still need the club moving down, but maybe not as much down as with a seven iron. So we're still keeping that front line but we're gonna feel that that ball position just moves slightly forward of center. And I'm still start trying to strike after the golf ball, but because the ball's a little further forward now, the low point shouldn't be too far forward. So we're set up with five wood, really focus on that movement again. A good strike, just 0 0.4 inches ahead now. So we see the club moving down less than a degree Club face a little bit open on that, I don't mind too much, but launch angle 14 degrees, carry 213. And even when we moved into his five wood, we just saw such a difference in the shot. He was carrying the ball swings pretty close to me speed wise, but carrying it over 200 yards. And he, you know, said as he got onto five wood in the past, if he was up on a tee, he found he could hit shots, but really struggled 
for contact on the floor. And it was really obvious as we spoke that because he was getting his low point behind, the club was moving up, and then that was just picking the ball off the tee, but it made it incredibly difficult on the floor. So we said lots of practice swings, focusing the head, and then standing up on that shot and making the same swing. And we can see there again, actually a little bit further forward with the low point, launch angle coming down, little bit longer carry at 226 and 243 total. Now, as we moved on to driver, it was really interesting because he actually said that he felt driver was the best club in the bag, which I know if you're watching, you'll go, how can that be the case? Apparently this is really tough, long shaft, no loft, but just think about what we've been talking about. So he'd been controlling his low point poorly and getting the low point behind the golf ball. Now that was causing the club to travel up as it hit the ball, which just happens to be the perfect scenario with driver. So we said we're going to get that ball a little further forward again. So more kind of left heel, maybe left armpit even. And as he swung there, we actually said, instead of looking ahead of the ball now, potentially looking slightly behind would be good. We weren't looking to move as aggressively into that left side. But as we did some practice swings, you could see when he touched the floor, it would have almost drop kicked into the ball. So bouncing probably a foot behind. So we said all he needed to do was miss the ground back there and get that club traveling up. So we got that ball forward, focused behind the golf ball and just made sure he missed the mat on the way down. And to be fair, for somebody that had only been playing golf six months, he hit driver unbelievably well. We can see what I've delivered there, 6.3 inches behind, four degrees up, 242 carry and 270 total. So it was quite interesting that even though he struggled with shots on the floor, with driver, because he was unintentionally getting that low point behind, it was actually very, very optimum. But the big take from the lesson was not to focus so much on the ball, but actually to focus on controlling that low point and do what he needed to do moving the ball position around to make him a great ball striker with every club in the bag. Right then guys, so first of all, that understanding when the ball's on the floor of hitting ball and then turf is really important. Can we control our low point in the golf swing? Make sure it's ahead of the ball. If you need to, use that little drill I did, scuffing the lines on the ground. Imagine the ball's on the back line and hit the front line. And if you can then focus the same and not be so golf ball orientated during your swing, you're really gonna see a huge difference in your ball striking. With driver though, if you're somebody who has been fighting it and thinning it, you might not have to work as hard as you think. Focus behind, get that low point behind and get the club traveling up with driver, but down when the golf ball's on the floor with every other club. So guys, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, like it and share it, comment below and I'll get back to as many people as I can. There's another video just there that hopefully will help with your game. Hopefully catch up with some of you guys down here soon. Stay in contact.